Praise the Lord. Turn in your Bible to Psalms chapter 66. I have a word for you today. In fact, two words. Fortunately, they've already put it on the screen behind me, or I'd surprise you with the words. I have a word for you, and this is a word not of future tense or past tense. This is a word of present tense. The word is, or words are, breakthrough. I declare, I've, from last Sunday, had a different message prepared, but last Sunday as Pastor James led us in that song of breakthrough, that has been going over and over in my mind, and the Holy Spirit dropped this word into my life, into my heart to share with you. And, and again, it's not past breakthroughs, it's not future breakthroughs, but it's a breakthrough right now. Amen. Your breakthrough begins right now. Amen. Right now. Turn to your neighbor and say breakthrough. breakthrough. Turn to your neighbor and say your breakthrough, your breakthrough. is today. today. See, I believe that with all of my heart. Breakthrough begins today. It's a breakthrough of, of spiritual life. Some of you have felt as though you've lived on a plateau, spiritually speaking. You've maybe even wondered, is this, is this the highest I can go? Is this the furthest I can go? I declare to you today, spiritually, breakthrough is here. It begins today. Some of you physically, your, your, your body physically has been breaking down. Maybe disease or, or, or sickness or whatever. But it feels as though you've been breaking down. You're not living up, you're breaking down. But I declare to you today, in your physical body, breakthrough begins right now. Amen. Financially. Financially. You know, it's amazing to me that everybody is talking, or at least one side is talking about how wonderful the economy is. And I'm looking in my back pocket and I'm not finding it that great. <laughs> Some... The, the employment is going off the charts best than it's ever been, we've been told, and yet there are some that can't find a job. There, there are some that can't pay bills, and I'm not talking because of mistakes that we've made or, or, or poor decisions that we've made. I'm talking about just life in general. But with regard to your finances today, your breakthrough begins right now. Amen. It's not because I declare it. It's not because I want it, and I do. It's because God has it for us. Our God is a God of the breakthrough. He is. That's consistently in his nature is to take what hinders humanity and break it. The yoke of bondage is broken. The chains of sin are broken. The prison of bondage is broken in the name of Jesus. But not only spiritually and physically and financially, but also relationally. Relationally. Some have marriages that are, are struggling, maybe even beyond struggling. Maybe decisions have been made that it's time to part or separate. Relationship with children that have been severed or broken or strained. Or children that have once walked with God, that have walked away from God. Not only children, but parents. But I'm here to tell you, breakthrough begins today. Breakthrough begins today. And a breakthrough implies that there's something that's being held back. A wall. A chain. Something is holding you back. Something has been promised. Something has been stated. Something has been given. And, and it, it, sometimes it appears it's, it's just, just beyond reach. But as far as we reach out, we can never attain that thing. We need a breakthrough. I think I mentioned this before. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father. But to receive that good and perfect gift, sometimes we have to have a breakthrough. John chapter 10 verse 10 tells us where the opposition comes from. The Bible says, The thief comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The thief comes to steal from you the promises that God has made to you. The thief comes to kill the dreams that you have in the Lord. The thief comes to destroy your life and your future. Now, how sad it would be if that was the end of the scripture. 
if all we were given was a, a warning about what was to happen, the nature of our enemy, if that was all that we were given, that would be completely horrible. But the Bible goes on. And aren't you glad that the Bible doesn't end with the problem? The Bible ends with the solution. The thief wants to steal. The thief wants to, to hinder you. The thief wants to build walls in your life. But God is a God that tears down the walls. And he said, but I have come that you might have life. And you see, that's not enough. If all that the scripture had said, if all that Jesus had said is, I've come that you might have life, we might presume that that means to exist, to survive, to, to get by, to just one day after another eke through life. But that's not what it says. He says that you may have life and have it in abundance. You see, our God is not a God of the just enough. Our God is a God of the more than enough. Whatever your need is, God can provide it and more. Whatever you require, God can provide it and more. I'll tell you, our God is a God of more. More. Every time we cry out to God for something, I think he, in his spirit, in his nature, in his DNA, it's almost as though he says, do you want more? Do you, do you want more? My mother, when I would eat Thanksgiving dinner, I was telling, we were at... Uh, Donna's uh, uh, sister and brother-in-law and mother's home for Thanksgiving. Families got together and, and um, we, we would finish with that when my mother and father were uh, on this earth. We would finish there and then we would wait a couple hours and go to my parents' house. And I would always, I would always, pardon the expression, I would always pig out at Donna's family's house. Almost to the point where I had to go to the altar and repent. And then we would go to mother and dad's house and I would eat just a little bit. And mother would constantly say, do you want more turkey? Do you want more turkey? No, mother, I'm fine. Do you want more dressing? No, mother, I'm fine. Do you want more mother? I'm fine. But I think our God has that nature. Do you want more? And I think within the heart of every believer, there's a desire for more. Not more blessings, not more provision, not more of the hand of God, but more of the face of God. To know him more, in more depth, in more, in, in more relationship, in more intimacy with God. A breakthrough may also require a miracle. It may require something you can't do. We are faced every day with things that are impossible to us. And if you haven't faced in your life, young or old, have not faced what is impossible, something that you can't do, it is impossible for you to accomplish, you will one day. And I'm not prophesying that in, in terms of, of disaster. I'm just telling you there are things you can't do. Hard as you try, talented as you may be, gifted, however persevering you may be to accomplish that thing, there are some things that you just can't do. In fact, the Bible talks about that. With man, there are things that are just impossible. God created us that way. If, if, if we could do anything and we could do everything, we wouldn't need God. But we need him. And he said, in this world, in the traverse of your life, you're, you're, just gonna, you're gonna face things you can't do by yourself. You're gonna face things that are impossible to you. Some of us face those things every day. And it would be horrible if that was the period, if that were the end. But then Jesus said, the word says, but with God... All things are possible. To even the things that are impossible for humanity, the miraculous power of God can flow through our lives and tear down the walls that hinder us. Always remember, you can't go back and change your beginning. You can't go back and change anything that's already happened. But you can start where you are and change the end. You can change the story this morning in your life. And as you're, as you're living and walking in this breakthrough, there are some people that are going to want to encourage you. Albert Okren said, sometimes when you are close to your breakthrough, well-meaning comforters and logical people can always spoil everything. You're believing for your breakthrough. You've heard the promises of God. You can see it in the eyes of the Spirit, but somebody comes beside you and says... It ain't never going to happen. 
Somebody comes beside you and say, you know, I've, I've known people that have died by what you've had. And I'm just telling you, and, and their, their, their response to, I don't want to hear that, I'm just being real, just keeping it honest, will keep your reality and your honesty to yourself. I don't need that. What I need is somebody to come along beside me and say, let's trust God. Come beside me and tell me what God has done in their life. How God has helped them to overcome. How God has brought breakthrough in their life. That's what I want to hear. I don't want to hear the can'ts. I want to hear God can. I don't want to hear you can't. I want to hear God can. But don't be discouraged by those people that want to come and encourage you. You can't stop them sometimes. Sometimes they speak. A lot of times they speak before they think but they speak before you can stop them, that's okay, don't worry about it. You don't have to accept every imperfect gift that comes your way. There's, and you don't have to be mean about it either. You don't have to be mean about it. Somebody says something, I don't accept that in the name of Jesus. Satan, get behind me. <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to do that. That's not going to help the circumstance. But what you can do is in your spirit say, I reject that. I don't accept that. No thank you very much. And, 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 and one more thing I think as we begin, just, this is just the introduction as we begin. Understand this, your breakthrough does not start the day you see a physical manifestation. Your breakthrough doesn't begin, hasn't begun because you've seen something happen. Your breakthrough starts the day you claim it by faith. Amen. The day you claim it, the day you say it's mine. God said it, and I receive it by faith. What is faith? Faith is trust. God said it. I trust God. I claim it for myself. I claim it for my own. A lot of us want to wait until we see something. We want to wait until there's a physical manifestation of, of that thing taking place in our life. But I'm just telling you, if you wait until you see it, you may be waiting a long time. You may be wasting a lot of praise time. But when you begin to claim it, it's mine because God said it's mine. It's mine because the word said it's mine. In that moment that you claim it for your own and declare that it's yours, that's when the breakthrough begins. That's why I can say this morning, breakthrough begins today. Amen. Begins today because I claim it today. Amen. It begins a day in your life because I claim it, but more importantly, because you claim it. It begins today in this church because we claim it in the name of Jesus. Breakthrough isn't on the way. Breakthrough is here today. Sounds like a song, doesn't it? Breakthrough isn't on the way. Breakthrough is here today. Hallelujah. <laughs> we'll let James Huey write that song. <laughs> Read Psalms chapter 66, verse 8 through 12. Listen to what it says. And I'm re reading from the English uh, Standard Version. It says, Bless our God, O people. Let the sound of praise, His praise, be heard. Do you know in reality, we could, be, we could end the service right now with those words. Bless our God. Let the sound of his praise be heard. And if the sound of his praise is going to be heard, how will it be heard? Through my mouth. Through my confession. Through my prayer. Who has kept our soul, verse 9, among the living? Who has not let our feet slip? For you, God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid a crushing burden on our backs. You let men ride over our heads. Oh my goodness gracious, that doesn't sound like a breakthrough. But like any father, there is correction that had to be made before the breakthrough can occur. The father is literally saying, there are things that I let come into your life. Sometimes I let them come into your life because they were your choices. Sometimes I let them in their life, be, let them happen in your life because it was your sin. Sometimes I let it happen because I'm guiding and directing your step. He said here, for you've tested us and tried us as silver is tried. You know, silver is, is, is purified. It's purified through a refiner's fire. That's what the Bible says, gold. And, and the imperfections begin to arise so that you can sweep them away so that the gold or, or silver in this case is and becomes more pure. And in the trials and tests... Every father or mother, every parent will discipline their children if they love their children. And the discipline is not to crush them. The discipline is not to destroy them. The hand of God is not a fist. The hand of God is open. 
arms of God open wide. But when correction is made, it is always made to bring us to where we can be blessed by God. And so he says here, you've done all these things, but why? Here's why. Verse 12, you let men ride over our heads. We went through the fire and the water. Here's the thing. We went through the fire and the water, but here's our testimony. Yet you brought us out to a place of what? Abundance. All of this happened to prepare us. All, all of this happened brick by brick, taking down the barriers that hindered us from receiving the abundance that you had always prepared for us to receive. You brought us out of the place of lack and you brought us into a place of abundance. There's so many times where, where a door has closed in our life. We lost our job. Perhaps lost a relationship. I'm not talking about marriage here. A door closes. And, and we stand at that door. And, and, and we stand there and we claim, open in the name of Jesus. Open in the name of Jesus. We grab a hold of that door and we start shaking it, trying to open it. And all the while, there's a door right next to it, wide open, with the blessings of God inside. We know what's inside the closed door. We've been there before. We face that. We've tasted. We've seen God is good. But then God closes that door. Why? Because he knows, for many of us, we never walk out of that door into the next until that one is closed. And whatever, God, whatever door God opens is always better than the door that he closes. We'll say that again. Whatever door God opens is always better than the door that, God's clo that God closes. And the Bible says, the doors that God close, no man can open. So it's a waste of time to try. It happened this week. I was out and about, and I went to this glass door, two doors, and I grabbed a hold of the door, and I pushed to go in, and it wouldn't open. And I'm pushing. It wouldn't open. I'm and the man next to me, walks to the other door and just pulls it wide open and walks through. <laughs> and, and, you know, and you know when that happens, I know none of you have done this, but when that happens, he always gives you that look like, <laughs> you know, you moron. <laughs> and it doesn't help that there's a sign right there by the, by the handle that says pull. <laughs> you feel so silly, but you open the door and you walk through. <laughs> For your breakthrough this morning, it may be time to stop wasting time on the closed door and look for the doors that God has already opened for you. Look to that which he has already prepared for you in life. There are four things I want to share with you very quickly. Four things I think that can bring us to that place of, of breakthrough in our lives. And the first one is, all of us must recognize the preeminence of Jesus Christ. That's the beginning and that is the end. The preeminence, the power, the necessity of Jesus Christ in our life. First service, two people committed their life to Jesus Christ, confessed their sins. In the 915 service, there were about 10 or 11 that committed their life, made a confession of faith for Jesus Christ. In that moment that they made that confession, they made Jesus number one in their life. They gave up their sin. They, they gave up the wrong they had done in their life. And can I just tell you, and hear me this morning, sin can be the greatest barrier for your breakthrough. Sin. You say, Pastor Steve, can I be a born-again believer and have sin in my life? Yeah. Yeah. But we have an advocate with the Father. His name is Jesus. And he overcame all of the sin of our life. All of the strongholds within our life can be broken by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ so that we can enter into the promise of God in our life. Well, how do I do that? You just ask God to forgive you. You don't, need to, you don't need to do the first works over. You don't need to get saved all over again. You're saved. You just need to be forgiven. And not only be forgiven, it's not enough to just say, God, forgive me. I don't want to just be forgiven. I want to be changed. I don't want to do that again. I don't want to have that connected into my life ever again. Breakthrough begins and ends with Jesus. Can I hear an Amen. And, 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 and follow this. You'll see this on the screen. Follow this. No Jesus, no breakthrough. But no Jesus, you'll know breakthrough. That is a principle that is, is undeniable. Breakthrough only comes through Jesus Christ. It doesn't come from your talents or your abilities or your hard work. I've been in circumstances in my life because it's a part of my DNA that, that if something's not working, you work harder. 
You do more. You give more time. You give more energy. You just keep going, going, going. But there are sometimes you can go and go and go from now until Jesus comes back and nothing's going to change. Some things you have to yield over to God. You have to understand. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, But thanks be to God that he gives us victory. He gives us breakthrough through our Lord Jesus Christ. Your breakthrough will only come through Jesus. If we could do it ourselves, we wouldn't need God. And most of us have tried to do it ourselves. If it's habits, we've tried to break them ourselves. In relationships, we've tried to fix them ourselves. In, in employment or, or finances, we've tried to work harder, or get a better job. We've tried to do that ourselves. It doesn't work. Sometimes the only thing that will work is no Jesus. A personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Not knowing about him. Not having information. Not joining a church. Not paying your tithes. Not even reading your Bible. But a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's a relationship for every single day. It's not just Sunday or Wednesday or Thursday. Every single day. And when it comes to that making Jesus preeminent. Number one. Most important in your life. There are some points that you're just going to have to take a stand in the power of Jesus. Sometimes you're just going to have to stand and confess, God is my source. I may not understand it. I may not know not to do. I may not have a vision of where to go. But I stand in the power of Jesus Christ. I stand in the power of the Holy Spirit that transcends the power of humanity. If you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, today is your day. Today is your day for breakthrough. Number two would be this. You've got to align yourself with God's word. There are people who say, I've never heard God speak to me. I've never heard the voice of God. Well, then you've never read the word of God. For the word of God is the voice of God. The word of God is the will of God. There are some things you don't have to pray about. You know, when we, when we are recruiting people for ministry in the church as servant leaders, and would you, would you mind serving? Let me pray about that, Pastor. Would you mind serving in the nursery? Let me pray about that, Pastor. You know what that means? That means I don't want to say no to your face, so I'm going to take a little bit of time. What it means is I'll write you an email telling you no. There are some things you don't have to pray about. If God says this is what we are to do, brother and sister, that's what we do. Lord, is it your will for my life? If God says, thus saith the Lord, brother and sister, he has thus said. And you don't have to ask him again. You think God's going to change his mind for you? You think God's going to change the order of things for you? He has said it in his word. He has declared it in his word. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. You're getting quiet here. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 says, And this is the confidence that we have toward God. Not the arrogance, but the confidence that we have to come boldly into his presence, not arrogantly or pridefully, as though we have a right to in and of ourselves. But confidently, we come into his presence, and we, uh, it says confidence we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Scripture will go on to say, and we have this confidence that if he hears us, he's going to answer us. If God has said he's going to do something in his word, brother and sister, take it to the bank, he's going to do it. We know God's will, we know God's will through God's word. So as we come to align ourselves with the word, and you're walking in your breakthrough, number one, you've got to read the word. We have a, and this would be a great place to begin making this commitment we have a read the Bible through in a year program in this church. We've been doing for years and years. Hundreds of people in this church have read the Bible through some many times over. Have read the Bible through systematically every day reading a portion of the scripture not to be overwhelmed. Brother uh, Deacon um, uh, Jay Affinney has been leading that for years. If you, want any, if you have any question, ask Brother Jay. Jay, raise your hand. That's Brother Jay right there. Ask him. He'll help you. He'll help you navigate through this. But you've got to read the word. You've got to read it. I have some people that have the Word of God on, on CD or on MP3 or whatever other kind of letters you got. And, and they, when they're in work, they're, they're listening to the Word of God. I know of some people that listen to it as they go to sleep at night. Last thing they hear at night is the Word of God. You've got to read the Word. But don't just read the Word. Pray the Word. 
And don't just pray the word, speak the word. Let the word of God comes out of your mouth. If somebody's asking you about a thing and it's in the word of God, speak what God's word. There are no more powerful words that you could ever speak than the word of God. No more power in a word than the word of God. But not only, not only read, pray, and speak, but you've got to live the word as well. There's no excuse for not living God's word. Number three, and this is a big one. It's going to take more than just this morning. To have your breakthrough, to begin the breakthrough this morning is going to require that you forgive. That's a big one. That's a big prison. Those are big chains. Forgive. And you know, it would be easy for somebody to say, and I'm sure someone here this morning is thinking, well, Pastor, that's easy for you to say to forgive. You don't know what they did to me. And you're right. I don't. And even if I did, I'm not sure there's much I could do except sympathy, compassion, and most importantly, to lead you to the Word of God. These are called unholy gifts. These are gifts that people thrust upon us. We didn't ask for them. We don't deserve them. We didn't want them. But they were thrust upon us. We, they were forced upon us in our life. And sometimes they have a profound effect. Profound effect of our past, our present, and profound effect of our future. But to live in unforgiveness, regardless of what the offense was, to live in unforgiveness is to put yourself in prison. And that prison doesn't affect the person who, who injured you. Prison doesn't hurt them. It doesn't affect them at all. But it's destroying your life. And all the while that we put ourselves in that prison of unforgiveness, we have the key, we have the power to release ourselves. Years and years ago in, in circuses, they used to have big elephants, little elephants. And with the little elephant, they would train that elephant. They would tether that elephant to a chain around its foot. There would be a shackle and a chain around, and they'd be anchored to the ground. And that elephant, many times you see pictures of elephants, and they're standing with their back leg, the one that's chained, their back leg out. They have, they have pushed against that chain. They have pulled against that chain practically all of their life. But there comes a point in time where that, where that chain can be removed. The tether, the shackle is still there, but the chain is removed. And that elephant will never go beyond where that chain had let them go before. And there are many people that live their lives that way, in unforgiveness. They, they know the shackle of unforgiveness will allow them to go so far, maybe in their relationships, maybe in their relationship with God, will allow them to go so far, but it won't allow them to go any further. And they come to a relationship with Jesus Christ, and he's unshackled them, and they're still not going any further. Unforgiveness keeps you shackled to the pain. And the Bible gives us a clear indication in Matthew chapter 6, verse 14. It says, 14, 15, If you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. We lock ourselves up. And I think perhaps one of the greatest hindrances to our breakthrough is that we hold these things in. And again, remember, there are some things that we can't do. There are some of you in this room that you have worked and worked and worked at forgiving somebody and you just can't forgive them. Sometimes we think we have for forgiven them, but we remember again and we think, well, if I remember, then I haven't forgiven. Listen, forgiveness doesn't mean you forget the offense. If anybody ever told you forgive and forget, forget it. <laughs> forgiveness doesn't mean you, you forget the offense, but it does mean that when you forgive, the sting of that offense is removed. The pain of that offense is removed. And you know, sometimes there are people that offend us deeply. I mean, deeply offend us. And we are locked up in this chain of pain and anguish. And, and here they're going on in their merry way. They're going on, nothing happened, no big deal to me. Going on and living and enjoying life. Maybe they've, even, maybe they've even confessed that sin and God has forgiven them. They're going on blessed of the Lord. And here we're locked up in prison. And sometimes we see them and that bitterness grows in our heart because God's blessing them and they offended me. We're in prison. And you have the key. Jesus emphasized the importance of letting those offenses go. And that's the beginning of our breakthrough. Let it go. In other words, set yourself free. 
And I think sometimes it's cathartic, spiritually speaking, cathartic to say, I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. Maybe there, there are people in my life that I have searched for, I've searched for them, to ask them to forgive me. I've searched for them. The, the, the pain in my heart is that I did something or said something to somebody that damaged their life and now I'm born again, now I'm free, now I'm liberated, but I know I committed that harm to them and I want to go back and make it right. But I can't. So I've got to release it to God. Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And sometimes we have that pain of, of being injured, but we can't go to that person. And you know, I think it's important to say I forgive you, but we've got to be careful how we say I forgive you. People come up to me once or twice in my life. Pastor, you offended me. You hurt my feelings. You did this, and you did this, and you did this, and you did this, and my, my, my life fell apart, and I was destroyed, and blah, 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 but in Jesus' name, I forgive you. No, you're not. You're not forgiving me. You're just burdening me with your pain. And it might be rightful that I caused the pain too, but you're not setting yourself free. You see, if you've got the pain, don't go to the person with the pain necessarily. I'm not a, I'm not a counselor. Don't go to the person with your pain. Go to Jesus with your pain. Go to Christ with your pain and your anguish. Let him set you free so that you can walk to that person and say, you know, we had a problem and, and I was hurt, but, but I want you to know I love you and I forgive you. Sometimes those words, I'm sorry or I forgive you, are some of the most powerful words on the face of the earth. I'm sorry. I forgive you. And a relationship is built back together again. And understand this. Forgiveness is not an emotion. Forgiveness is not an emotion. Forgiveness is a choice. And even beyond a choice, forgiveness is a decision. I choose to let that go. I choose to unlock this door. I choose to untether myself from not only the chains but the shackles and begin to move forward as God has provided for me in my life. Forgive. Finally, lastly, to experience a breakthrough you must, and I love this, expect a breakthrough. Expect. I think that's one of the things in the church that we never talk about. We talk about promises of God. We talk about the blessings of God. We talk about something coming. We talk about what is ours, but we never expect. Expectation, write this down, expectation requires preparation. Some of you had somebody over your house for Thanksgiving dinner. Well, they didn't just show up. You didn't just invite them and show up. You cleaned the house. You baked the food. You told that son who had never cleaned his room in 30 years to go clean your room. You prepared. And as we accept that this is a day of breakthrough, this is a present tense day of breakthrough, we must begin to prepare for that breakthrough. Prepare. Romans chapter 5 verse 2. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into the grace to which we stand and we rejoice in hope. We rejoice in expectation of the glory of God. We rejoice in expectation of the breakthrough that God is bringing into our life. So what I encourage you to do is speak your breakthrough. I encourage you this morning, confess your breakthrough. I encourage you to prepare for your breakthrough. Prepare for your health and healing. Prepare for the relationships being mended. Prepare for the spiritual mountaintops that God will bring you to. Prepare for your financial blessing. Begin today to prepare for what God has already begun to do in your life. Preparation. Expectation requires preparation. And finally, preparation and expectation demands that we begin to praise God. Praise him. Again, I know there are a lot of people, Pastor, I'll praise God when I see something happen. Bless the Lord. Praise God if he opens that door, then I'll begin to praise him, but not a minute before. You got it all backwards, brother. Expectation requires preparation. Praise is preparation for what God is going to do. 
It's not waiting until the eyes of the natural see. It's seeing into the eyes of the Spirit what God has already prepared for you in your life. So praise Him. At the very beginning, the Scripture said, let us forever praise the Lord. Let the sound of praise be heard. When we enter into the sanctuary, we begin praising God. We wake up in the morning, thank you, Lord, for the breakthrough that you've brought into my life. Thank you, Father, at nighttime when you lay your head on the pillow and it's the last thing you think before your eyes are closed and sleep envelops your body. Thank you, God, for the breakthrough in my life. Thank you, Lord. I praise God. He has healed my body. I praise God. He has provided me the best job I have ever had in my life. I praise God. My children are coming to Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I praise God that the windows of heaven are opening up and blessings are being poured into my life. I praise God. Not only for what is happening, but for what he is beginning to do in my life. Praise him. Psalm 66, 1 through 3 in the International Children's Bible says, Everything on earth, shout with joy to God. Sing about his glory. Make his praise glorious. And then verse 3. Say to God, your works are amazing. Your power is great. And your enemies fall before you. Who's the enemy? The thief. Who's the enemy? The murderer. Who's the enemy? The devil. And the devil is defeated in Jesus' name. It's already defeated. And if the devil is defeated, then breakthrough begins right now. Claim it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I have a breakthrough in my family. I have a breakthrough in my job. I have a breakthrough in my body. I live God's breakthrough. Breakthrough is mine in Jesus' name. Say it with me. Breakthrough is mine in Jesus' name. So, first of all, recognize the preeminence of God. And if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, that's the beginning. No Jesus, no breakthrough. Secondly, align yourself with God's word. Learn the word. Our adult connection groups, that's what the, that's what the teachings are all about, the word of God. It's not about philosophy or politics. It's about God's word. It's about knowing God intimately. Forgive. Forgive as God has forgiven you. I'm not sure anybody has offended me as much as I offended God before I was saved. And yet he forgave me. He didn't make me beg. He didn't go over a list of grievances against me. When I asked him to forgive me, he forgave me. I didn't have to join, buy, sell, pay. I just asked him, can I be your child? Can I be your son? And he said, sure. It's what I've always wanted. And expect. Expect. Every head is bowed and every eye closed. I'm not going to keep you long. But the first of the greatest breakthroughs is Jesus. Sin will always keep you away from what God has for you. Sin will always be that wall that separates you from God's best in your life. Relationally, physically, financially, and spiritually. And it all begins with a personal relationship with Jesus. You don't have to beg. You don't have to plead. You don't have to grovel. All you do is come to the Lord and say, can I be your, in your family? Can you forgive me for all that I've done in my life? And God would answer you through his word. I love you. And my love endures forever, the psalmist said. God would answer you, I'm faithful, and I'm just, and I will forgive you of all of your sins. God will answer, come to me, you who are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God is not looking for perfect people. If we were perfect, we wouldn't need God. God is looking for people who are broken, need a breakthrough, who are just willing to come and say, I'm sorry. And I can promise you this. I learned this in my life. God will accept you just the way that you are. You don't have to stop anything. You don't have to start anything. You don't have to buy or join. God will accept you just the way that you are. 
but God will never leave you the way that he finds you. you. Change your life. You can't change your past, but you can change how your story ends. And so I'm going to ask this morning in this room, if there's anybody who needs to be forgiven of sin, anybody who desires a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, anybody who needs a breakthrough spiritually, the beginning, to be born again, to be a Christ follower, if you're here and that's in your heart, it's in there because God put that desire in your heart. But you want to respond this morning. I'm just going to ask you to simply raise your hand. And by doing that, you're not joining the church. You're just allowing me to pray with you. If you need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you want to be forgiven, raise your hand high and wave at me so that I can pray with you. Thank you, thank you, yes, thank you. The balcony, I don't want to miss anybody. Yes, thank you. Bless you, thank you. Anybody else? This is your day. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Unfortunately, many will procrastinate and procrastination leads to more hindrances, bigger prisons. Today is a day. Don't put it off. Don't let the devil steal from you right now. Anybody else, this is the last time I'm going to ask, but anybody else who hasn't already raised their hand and wants to say, Pastor, pray for me, pray with me. Just thank you. God bless you. Anybody else? All right, we're going to pray. Thank you. We're going to pray. And I want everyone to pray. Some of you are praying this for the first time. Some of you, it's a rededication, a recommitment to the Lord. But all of us are going to pray in agreement together. This is the will of God. And this is the beginning of your breakthrough. Join with me. Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. And I ask you, because your word said that you would, forgive me. Forgive me of every sin I've ever committed. Forgive me of every wrong that I've ever done. Forgive me of all of the pain I may have caused to somebody else or the pain I've caused to my own life. Forgive me. And then, Heavenly Father, help me to forgive others. Help me to let go of my past. Help me to forgive myself as you have forgiven me. And to be set free. I confess today. I acknowledge today. You are my heavenly father. I am your child. And Jesus Christ is my savior. I receive it by faith. I trust you God. And today. I can say. I am a child of God. And I have a brand new beginning. The old is gone. The new has come. I am a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give the Lord a praise offering this morning. What a tremendous harvest. Glory to God. In every service today, breakthrough came. But not only for those that accepted Christ, for everyone in this room, your breakthrough begins today. Accept it. Expectation demands preparation.